All right. Here we go. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to pray, to believe, to trust. Oh God, I pray that the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. Um, oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, we just honor and bless your holy name for everything you're doing. And for each one that will be touched tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Appreciate your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so let's get started. First, uh, hopefully you have your, uh, let's start with the easy one or the tough one, InfoWars. InfoWars is talking about what's getting ready to happen. You can take a screenshot and go there. They have some very good material. They have some material that uh, some feel is way out on one end, but their documentation, interesting thing, the material on InfoWars has been ahead of what we have been finding to happen, but it's talking about how prices are going to start going up and we see some differences and issues taking place with prices. Have you noticed the price of gas where you live? The other price is going up, but it, in a nutshell, um, the large inflationary impulse in the region, right? And so the index of the price is going up. You see that and many interesting things happening on the stock market um, that Bloomberg is saying that there's gonna be, this is the biggest annual rise in nearly 10 years, right? That has happened. It's, it extends far beyond our weekly shop as there is an extensive literature con uh, literature connecting higher food prices to periods of social unrest. Do you see that higher food prices connected to social unrest? And so that gives us something to start praying about as the protection is going on um, that, right. So considering the hardship that has already taken place because of the pandemic that's down here at the bottom. And then you have the issue of other higher food prices, right? And you had the poor harvest and all those kind of things. Um, as consumers spend more and more of their money on food, you will see more and more challenges with the prices and stuff and social unrest. So let's pray and ask God to be with us. Uh, with the issue that's connected to food and food safety, food, most people cannot provide an, for themselves because if you're in a hot, you're in a, an apartment or a condo, where are you going to grow the food? And even in my situation where I have a backyard, a front yard, I don't know if I can grow enough food to sustain myself. And listen to this, it takes years. We planted a persimmon tree, um, and it took maybe four years for it to produce fruit. We planted a fig tree last year. It hasn't produced one fig yet. We planted a lemon tree about four years ago. It produced one lemon. This year it has flowers. It's gonna produce more lemons. Uh, same thing with an apple tree I planted in the first couple of years, nothing this year. We already have about 20 apples on that. But if you are, if, if I was to live, from the fruit that's been planted in my yard, I've been dead years ago, right? Now, this this article, look at this. I hope, hopefully you can see the title. Did you hear of the Nuremberg trials? The Nuremberg doctors and the trials that take place. Did you, you hear about that? Let me hold it up here again so you can see it. Do some research. Because one of the things, listen, one of the things um, you can you can bank on, if I show it to you, is because I researched it. I was sharing with somebody the other day. I made some statements about China and uh, somebody's shoes, shoe company, and all of that. And I didn't have the exact references, but we got on online and checked it out, got the references, got the information. So this is talking about the Nuremberg trials. So um, uh, the Nuremberg trials. This happened between September 1939 and April 1945. 
uh, some really bad things happen. And then um, they were put on trial for what these doctors did. And um, it gives the dates of the trial and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, listen what they said the doctors did. 23 German physicians who either participated in the Nazi program to euthanize persons deemed unworthy of life. You know, euthanize, right? That is a medical term, <laughs> making it nice when they murder somebody, when they kill somebody, when they put them to sleep forever, okay? They had a program to euthanize people who were deemed unworthy of life. And who were those people? The mentally ill, the mentally retarded, or the physically disabled, okay? They were part of a program to be euthanized or they conducted experiments on them without their consent. And when these people went on trial, these doctors went on trial, 16 of them were found guilty. Seven of them were executed because of what they did, because they were accessory to, they, they had a consenting part in what took place. They were willful participants. They knowingly encouraged people, right? And it talked about some of the experiments that people were involved in, right? Look at the list of experiments right here. Interesting thing here, hopefully you can see it pretty well. Um, it looks like I got too much light coming in. Stay with me and I'm gonna get right to the biblical material in just a moment, but high altitude experiments. So how do we know what will happen to you when the, uh, the plane loses its compression, compression and oxygen and all that at a high level? We know because they took, they took prisoners and did those kind of things to them, experimented on them, right? And so when you, when you see these kind of things happening and people are pushed today to get involved in stuff, and here, here's the issue. Oh, and who did they target with euthan euthanasia? One of the main targets were nursing homes, nursing homes and people who are considered useless eaters. What is a useless eater? By the way, people are being set up to become a useless eater now and don't even know it. When, when people wanna give you everything and you're not earning anything, you become a useless eater by default, right? And so that's been set up and people are like, oh man, thank God they're giving me a dime, they give me a penny, they give me a nickel. But guess what? When you become dependent on somebody giving you a dime, giving you a nickel, giving you a penny, you would dance to their tune and not go out and make your own money. But anyway, check it out. What, what am I saying? Here's the issue. When you're being pushed to engage in something that's experimental, right? Medically, it's experimental. And you're pushing people. You're pushing in nursing homes. You're pushing on the mentally ill. Those doctors, seven of them were executed because of how they participated in that. Now let's get to the material for the day. Thank God that you're here. Um, let's get started. Some of you know I'm, I'm dealing with the influence, the power of influence in psychology, right? And this is a book I recommend everybody get that and look through it, get the examples. Why is that? Because as, as a therapist, I'm always looking for how do you change people? And I found, you may be shocked to hear this, I found that Christians will very often hide behind the idea of God and not do the work of change, okay? There was one young brother was saying, you know, he, he wanted to do the things that God wanted him to do, but he wanted to keep sleeping with this woman, right? Having sex with her and blaming her for getting him off track. And then he'll run back to God and ask for forgiveness. And, and she was the problem. And he never looked at what was going on with him and eventually ended up with two women that the process was going. You, you follow what I'm saying? And he kept hiding behind the God thing. And really we needed to deal with the emotions, what was going on, what was keeping him in that mess and misery, and even, and even y'all, what was allowing the women to stay in that? That's not my subject today. Let's get, let's get into what I want to talk about today, because I want to talk about the principle of social proof, the principle of social proof, and I want to show you how it is being used on us today, 
And let me let me start off with a scripture. Let me start off with a scripture, okay? Matthew chapter 7. Listen to this. Matthew 7. You, you've been acquainted with this. Verse 13. Listen to the words. Enter ye in at the straight gate. You got it? For wide is the gate, broad is the way that leads to destruction. So there's a there's a wide gate that leads to destruction. Listen to this. And many there be who go in thereat. So there will be masses of people going in the wrong direction. You got that? Now stay with me. How do you get the masses? What is that about? Can I, can I pause and tell you something and pray for me? I'm trying to take my time because I got a lot I want to share. Satan is a master psychologist and he uses our natural human experiences to get us to go in the wrong direction, right? There's a narrow way then there's a broad way. And the Bible said many will be going in the broad way, right? And then it says in verse 15, beware of false prophets. Okay? False. The next one, prophets. So they are prophets who are prophesying, who are ministering the word of God, who are gathering people, who are encouraging people but, but the result of their ministry leads people in the wrong direction. They are false prophets. They are, because <laughs> a prophet is a good thing, but a false good thing is a bad thing. Did you get that? Okay, put five in the chat. Let me know that you, you're getting it. You need to, me to repeat something, let me know. But the false prophets come to you in sheep's clothing, right? They're covered up looking like a sheep, but they're wolves on the inside. So now we're going, to, we're going to look at social proof, social proof. This is where we're going to start today, social proof. And I'm going to connect it to how we're being influenced today and what God is asking us to work on as men and women of God. If you got it, put a five in the chat. Come on, let me know that you're there. Here it is. And this is page number 114. We're going to kind of start. It starts with this quote. When all think alike, no one thinks very much. Let me say that again. When all think alike, when all of us think the same way, exactly the same way, none of us are thinking very much. So he begins the chapter talking about canned laughter. Now, not, not the one where you squeeze the can and it sounds like laughter. I'm talking about canned laughter in a television program. Uh, you're watching a sitcom like, um, the old old Cosby shows, the, uh, um, what is it? Um, they have um, Three's Company way back then. They have Friends. They have, um, uh, you know, basically any kind of comedy show going on right now, right? And you're watching a sitcom and they have this laugh track playing, right? In the background. And ha ha, and the people are laughing. Why are they doing that? Think with me now. So here's a show. And when a joke is supposed to be there, or when they think they told a joke, they would have this canned laughter, you know? Now, there are powerful, stay with me, there are powerful television executives who know, listen to this, you got to get this, who know the public does not want to hear laugh tracks. See, we want a natural program. We don't want canned laughter where they're just putting it in, ha, 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 right here, ha, 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 right there, right? Recorded laughter plugged in, no. Because people feel it's stupid. It's obvious, right? It's, it's phony. You are not laughing, but the program has people laughing all through the program. I mean, they're laughing at everything, ha, 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 listen to this. So now, are you ready? The TV executives here, I'm gonna shift, you gotta get this. The TV executives want to give people what they want, because if I give you what you want, you're going to like my program. Is that you, you understand that to be true? Yes, yes, yes. OK, so and the TV director knows that people don't want canned laughter. The actors don't want it. The directors don't want it. The writers don't want it. But the TV executives continue to add canned laughter to the program. Here's why, here's why. 
When you use canned laughter, stay with me, stay with me. I'm on the surface. I'm getting ready to go deeper. When you use canned laughter, and I'm talking about Bible, Satan, Warren, Satan, listen. When you use canned laughter, it will cause the audience who's listening to laugh longer and to laugh more often. Here, here we come. And, and rate the material even funnier even when the material is inferior. You, you didn't get it. Okay, let me say it another way and I'll come back to this. You, you're on a double date <laughs> with somebody you really don't care for. Mm -hmm. But your girlfriend is kissing and hugging up on her boy, which makes it more likely that <laughs> you, right? With this person you really don't care for, the tendency, I know, I know you say, no, Pastor, it ain't going to happen. I know it ain't going to happen to you, but the majority will go along with the majority will love the one you're with. Are, are you all there? Okay, okay. So even when, even when the jokes are inferior, even when the material is bad, when the material is not good, if you add canned laughter to it, People who do laugh will laugh longer. They will laugh more often and they will rate the material even funnier when it's not as funny. Man, is somebody hearing me? I, I hope you're hearing me. I hope you're hearing me. Are y'all you, are hearing me? Listen, because that explains that explains some of your relationship. Relationship, not my talk, topic, I can get to this, but anyway, let me go. So this led to Robert now, he wanted to really break it down. Why do we laugh at someone when we are fully aware that I'm hearing canned laughter? I'm hearing something that was added to the program that may not even been the best time to laugh. I see it as fake. Watch this. I hear it over and over again, yet it works. Doesn't work on everybody, but it works on enough people that even when people say, I don't want any canned laughter, they put it in. This is a weapon of the influence of social proof. See, see what, 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 what we're talking about now, we're in the, the, the middle of the woods now, I'm getting ready to go deep and get it to you right here real quick. Satan weaponizes the good things about human beings and the bad things. See, we think we think Satan only weaponizes lust and he's gonna have you chasing this and chasing that and doing this thing crazy sexual and doing that thing crazy sexual. No, he weaponizes everything. He will take church and turn it into a weapon to ruin your life. Are you getting that? This is the weapon of social proof. Come on, if you can't put a five in the chat, I want to make sure you're getting this because now I'm getting ready to explain to you what I'm what I mean here. You get let me look in the chat. You get it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you, thank you. You got it. Good. You're putting it in. Thank you. Listen. One of the ways, stay with me. I'm going to pray in, in just a moment. One of the ways that we figure out naturally as children growing up, right, what is right or what is wrong, we we find out and we look and see what other people are doing. That is correct and right. And we view behavior as correct and right. And we view it correct naturally when we see other people doing it. So I'm learning how to cook um, better, right? And one of the things I'm struggling with is cracking an egg. Have you, have you seen a professional chef crack an egg? No eggshells, I crack the eggs, all these shells. So I've learned, I've learned now if I put some water on the tip of my finger, I can get the eggshell right out. You know, it's really interesting. I, I didn't know that, but I wouldn't learn how to crack an egg. So I've been watching chefs crack an egg. So I'm gonna learn the correct way to crack an egg. Are you following? So usually that's a, the best way to do it. We naturally do that. I remember when I was just getting out in the street, I wanted to learn how to dance. I got somebody to show me how to dance. And then if I could dance like them, right? Getting it correct. Are you, you following? I go to a church, everybody stands, you know, I stand up. I, 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 I pastored a Spanish church years and years ago. At, at one time, pastoring two churches at the same time. So I would 
or preach at one church, jump in the car, drive over to another church, and rush in there, did not speak a word of Spanish other than hola or, you know, something like that, buenos dias, or, you know, whatever. I, I didn't speak in Spanish. Let, let me not, you know, stop. I just didn't speak it. But anyway, I rush in the church and I sit down and I'm waiting and listening and watching. And one time I was in church and people started standing up and I stood up and they turned to me and they said, no, pastor, we asked the people from Guatemala or from some other part of South America to stand up. But here I am standing, right? Because I was observing behavior. Stay with me. You're driving on the highway. The sign says 55 miles an hour, but guess what? Everybody else is doing what? Everybody else is going what? 80 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour, right? And in the process of everybody else going 60 and 70 miles an hour, are y'all still there? Hope, hopefully I didn't lose you. Hopefully I didn't lose you. Let me see. Where are you? You still there? Okay. Let me see if I can get, what I'm, I'm trying to do, stay with me, stay with me. I'm going to try something real quick. I'm going to try something real quick and see if I can get, hold on, hold on, stay with me one second. I'm trying to see if I can go live right on Facebook at the same time and kill two birds with one stone, right? Almost there. I know you said, Pastor, you should have had this set up here before create live. Is that it? Here we go. And can you all still see me there? Hold on, hold on, hold on, Zoomers. And okay. Hello, hello, hello. I'm gonna hit go live now. Can I use the same camera? Or will I need to use a different camera? Okay, so that's not working. Let me get back to y'all. Let me get back to y'all. So Zoomers, you're still there with me? Okay, here we go. So here's the point that I was making in that, in the process of what we're doing now, you're on the highway, everybody else is going 55, you're going 60, 70, and 80. It doesn't matter what the sign says because you're going with the flow of traffic. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Are you hearing that? I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm probably gonna drive faster when everybody else is going fast or get run over. Do you know you can get hurt doing what is right when everybody else is doing something wrong? Are you, are you getting that? Yes, you can actually get hurt. So the understanding is if a lot of people are doing something, then usually we can do just what they are doing and we'll be doing the right thing. That's a, that's a rule. That's a natural uh, tendency of people to work that way, right? Yeah. But here's the problem. We get accustomed to that. So if more people riot, have a riot when they get upset, guess what? When you get upset, you're going to feel like burning down something. Now, I know you're not going to get out there and do it, right? Of course not. You're, you're not going to get out there and do it. Maybe you will at least put a disguise on so pastor won't be watching and say, Hey, that's sister so and so, that brother so and so, then they're burning down the building. Anyway, back to my lesson. The problem is not that human beings look to see what others are doing and then do that. That's not the problem. The problem is when we respond to social proof in a mindless way. When it's a reflexive way, oh, I'm just doing it. This this is a black thing, and I'm going to do it. Well, what if it's a black thing and it's a wrong thing? Well, this is this is this is what white people do. What 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 if it's a white thing and a wrong thing? Well, this is what people do in my uh, social economic status and all this. This is what everybody's doing. But what if it's a wrong thing? Well, this is what what we do at my church. What if it's a wrong thing? Are you here? The social pressure. The problem is not that we think something is funny, you know, when it's not funny. The problem is we think something is right, even when we know it's a lie, but others are believing it as if it is true, and therefore we go down the broad way with them. Oh, man, if I'm telling the truth, somebody put truth in the chat. 
Okay, let me give you an example. Some of y'all are still not convinced. There was an experiment done with turkeys. Turkey, yeah, yeah, Thanksgiving turkey. <laughs> there was gonna be, listen, the turkey was gonna be the American bird. You know, we have the bald eagle now. There was a time America was gonna use turkeys. Yeah, but anyway, experiment with young turkeys, young turkeys, and um, they would notice that the mothering instinct of the turkey was triggered by the sound of a young turkey going chip 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 you know whatever whatever turkey sounds man you, you you got it right so if the chick listen listen made the right sound cheep 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 the mother turkey would care for the chick no matter what the chick looked like or what it smelled like the mother got triggered by the sound are you hearing me? Some of us are triggered by sounds, words, and phrases. That's why we got to get saturated with the word of God so that we are triggered by the word and not by the world. Are y'all hearing me? So they, they did this experiment. So they took a polecat, a stuffed polecat. Now a polecat is a natural enemy of the turkey. If you drug a pole cat on a string toward the turkey, the turkey would want to fly, get away, and all that attack, anything, right? Natural enemy coming. But they put the recording of the sound that triggered the mothering of the turkey. And they could literally take a stuffed pole cat, the natural enemy, and draw it in to the turkey to where the turkey would start caring for its natural enemy and mothering it. Satan has been using your desire, listen to me, to be correct. Your desire to fit in, your desire to be normal. And he's pushing everybody in a certain direction. And they're turning around to you and say, come on, it's okay, it's okay. And the Bible is saying, watch out. Broad is the way. Are you hearing me? How do you get all these people in the broad way? Satan is using their natural desire and process of being correct using it as a weapon against them. I'm in school, I'm learning how to write my name. You know, there's a certain way you're supposed to hold your pencil. And I'm holding my pencil like this, and I look over and my neighbor's holding it the other way. And I started doing that. That's a good thing. Satan is watching, oh, okay. You look over to find out how to be correct. Well, I'm gonna make sure right next to you is the wrong model. Your family taught you one way, as soon as you leave home, I'm gonna make sure somebody's right next to you telling you they love you, they appreciate, you're so wonderful, and they're going in the wrong direction. Are you hearing me? That's what the devil is doing. We get caught up in sound. Don't, don't, don't go with a sound just because, just because you're hearing something. It has to be deeper than that. A lot of false prophets out in the world, a lot of false teachers. And this 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 instinct comes over you, oh, end up hugging a devil, end up hugging a snake. So what is the way we do it? Endure hardness as a good soldier. Be able to stand strong. Endure hardness. Notice what's going on. So now when you listen to a program, it's canned laughter. Even if it's funny, recognize it's canned laughter and why they're using it on you. Psalm 120. We're going to pray. Psalm 120, verse 1 and 2. In my distress, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me. Isn't that beautiful? God knows who you are. Listen, the enemy has been getting you caught up in so much mess so that you will stink like the enemy, so you smell like the sin you've been in. But God goes beyond that. He hears the sound of your cry. You repent it before God, you turn your heart to him, 
You told God, I'm sorry, don't want to ever go there. God listens to the cry. In my distress, Psalm 120, I cried unto the Lord and he heard me deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. Psalm 116, I love the Lord. Why? Because he hath heard my voice and my supplications because he inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. I love the Lord. Why? Because he heard my cry. Listen, the thing, listen, the thing that is natural in you that Satan wants to exploit is that you look beyond yourself for correction. Watch this. God establishes something beyond you for correction, the word of God, amen? Then he goes beyond that. Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you. You accept Jesus. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they come and live inside of you, and you are led by the Spirit of God, and now you have an internal navigational thing going on because externally Satan is going to be pushing everyone to go in the wrong direction. One of the most frightening things you will see in the last days of some great men and women of God that you respected going in the wrong direction. As the Bible said, some of your enemies are going to be of your own household, not just your literal household, some of your church house, some of your spiritual fathers and mothers will deny the Lord. You, you, got, to, you got to know how to call upon the Lord and know him yourself. You got to have a living and active relationship with the Lord your God and go in that direction. You got to do it. You got to do it. Otherwise, the influence will take you over. Oh, yeah. And the enemy is bent on doing what? Taking you over. Satan is not playing. He's not playing any game. He intends to take you and me out. Amen. And we intend not to let that happen. Would you, would you just join me for a moment? I want to pray with you. I used to say I want to pray for you, but I'm praying with people who are praying. Amen? Praying with people who are praying. And I just want to just share a word of encouragement. Listen, no matter what's going on, no matter what's going on, Jesus said what my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. God, help us to take the time to hear your voice and to follow you. Amen. Listen, let me begin. I want to pray with A.L. 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 Yes. I'm not sure who that is, but that's okay. God knows who you are. Amen. God knows who you are. Sometimes it's interesting when we're sharing prophetic words with somebody, a word of knowledge, word. They would say, well, you, you tell me what's on your heart. Well, I can tell you what's on my heart. It doesn't change what God is doing for you to let me know what's going on with you because we only know in part, we only see in part, amen? So I will share what I believe. And then I'm asking you to go before God, amen? And talk to him about what's challenging you, what's What's the thing going on? So, A.L., Father God, I just want to thank you. Lord, I know you heard my prayer today. A.L., I was praying before this message, and, and, and even the prayer got more intense as I discovered the principle of that social pressure, that social control that's going on today. And I said, God, please allow people to come who will hear this or will we'll see it as it's shared on YouTube and Facebook, wherever it is shared. I didn't get the other thing going. I believe I need that second camera to get it. I'm, I'm going to try it again. I'm not going to give up. But A.L., I just want to speak God's blessings over your life for courage and grace. Now, it seems like you are facing a, a, a fork in the road, we call it a fork of where the world is going this way. You, 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 you've come to a place where either you're going to have to go left or right, you're going to have to go up or down. You, you, you cannot 
continue. It seems like is that part in the journey? It seems like also you had paused there for a little time and you're waiting. <laughs> it seems like you're waiting to see who's coming from this angle and I can figure out what's on that end. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want to go down there and figure out that's a bad thing. And the other way, so if I can, you know, somebody make it back, I can say, what was it like? But it seems like this is a time to sit down and really talk to God. Wait a minute. And talk to him about why are you where you are now? That's one thing to talk about. So how, how did I get here? And then from there, because see, sometimes we get in trouble because we think the only thing are the two choices in front of us. Sometimes what God might want to say to you is neither one of those two choices are good. It's time to turn around. I don't have an indication out of those which one it is. But what I sense is it's time to sit down and talk to God about what the choices are. This is not a decision that you can make just based on natural ability. This is a time to say, hey, God, you got to help me right about here. So, Father, I just want to thank you in Jesus' name for what you released and what you made right in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank the Lord. Let me pray for Dr. Kimberly, the Dunbar family. It is just such a privilege praying for with you guys. And thank God for your ministry and your courage uh, as a family, for your light that you cause to shine, for the heart that you have for people. Yes, Lord. And it, it seems like the Lord is saying things are going to get brighter and brighter in your home. Hallelujah. It was like seven years ago. I mean, things were going in such a direction seven years ago. I mean, everything, all of the cylinders, everything working like seven years ago. Hallelujah. And it's not like God has to go back seven years, right? He can, he can restore the years that the locals have eaten. But God can come in and being, yes, bring such a grace. You desire salvation to move in your household in a powerful way. And I'm talking about the beauty of it. You want the genuine thing. You know, some people just want it to look good. You want it to be good, thorough. I mean, all the way through grandmammy happy, you know, good. And so Father, I just stand in agreement with the Dunbar family that goodness and mercy will follow them and that the light of your love will shine brighter and brighter. Yes, Lord. I thank you for revelation that's being released. You, you, know, you know, it's like God is saying, you guys are going to start connecting the dots in such a way that's going to be amazing. You're going to have an aha, and he's going to have an aha. You said, wow, God is going to honor what you've been doing. And seven years ago, man, God is bringing that back in a good way, but amplifying it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray with Jackie Patrice. Amen. 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 Okay, no problem. Somebody saying they can't hear an advice using the wife. Okay. Got it. Got it. Jackie Patrice. We, we're going to lift up Jackie Patrice today. Father, we just thank you for what you're doing in Jesus' name. We thank you for your love and your compassion, your mercy, Father. We just honor you today for who you are and for what you have released in life in Jesus' name. We thank you for this great woman of God. Hallelujah. We thank you for the privilege and the honor. Yes, and your grace and your mercy. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. We thank you for your goodness. And Jackie, what, what I see is somebody, you know how you can paint with your hands. You know, you get your hands all in the paint. People do that kind of painting. You can get your hands all muddy. You can get your hands all dirty. And then what is interesting after those kind of experiences is what do we do to clean our hands off, right? And generally, it is much easier to clean our hands if we were prepared before. You know, we, we knew that we're going to be in a situation like this. We knew it was going to be something that would involve that, you know, where you had to just get down and dirty to get it done, right? And then because of what was prepared to be done, yes, Lord. 
So I pray, I pray that some, and it seems like I should pray that some assistance comes your way to be a blessing to you. Father, I just pray that your love, or, or Jackie would feel the love of God in her life in a very special way, would feel love and would feel and get literally the assistance that is needed to come along at this time. There, there were times in the Bible where it talks about how somebody would wash the hands of the man or woman of God, right? Preparation, others will come and assist, others will come and help. And so I pray that that be released in your life now. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stay with me uh, a few more? I wanna pray for Jamie. Father, I just wanna thank you for the opportunity to pray for this woman of God. Hallelujah, I thank you for your goodness and mercy. I thank you for your love and compassion. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And Jamie, it seems like I should just, just really encourage you to know that God loves you. I was listening to Lauren, Lauren Dingle. Lauren, what's her name? Lauren, uh, anyway, I don't wanna stop and look it up, but anyway, <clears throat> listening to her in worship and in the process, excuse me here, in the process with Lauren, thank you, in the process with Lauren, one of her songs was about how she would think, <clears throat> she would feel that she was weak and God was saying that she was strong and the song ended up with, I believe what you said, I believe what you said, right? And so we just want to encourage you in that with what God has said and is saying about you, that you believe what he has said. You believe what he has said, woman of God. And one of the things that God says is that he loves you. He cares for you. And you believe that. That will fix everything else. You know how the scripture says, I will make your crooked places straight and, you know, put you on the highways and feed you with Jacob, the hair of your father, all that kind of stuff. What settles you in that is for you to know that you're loved by God. And once you get settled in that, all of the other things fall into place. That was Abraham's issue, remember? God had to just keep working on him till he got him there. And the beautiful thing, God works on us until we, until he gets us there. So, Father, I just want to thank you that this daughter of God, Jamie, is hearing and understanding and knowing that she's loved by you. And that settles her heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you, would you stay with me just a moment more? I want to pray with Martina and Sylvia. So, Martina, we just want to bless God for you. We want to thank you. Yes, Lord, we want to thank you for being there. So, Martina, see, see, there, there are a couple of ways of approaching things. Water can be rushing in on us that frightens us, or water can be rushing in on us like waves coming in from the ocean. Water coming in frightens us. We're not dancing and we're celebrating in. Water coming in from the ocean like a wave, it comes in and get around our feet. We dance and we rejoice and we play in it. Why? Because we know this too shall pass. And so Father, I just pray that Martina would, 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 would receive the encouragement that she needs in her own way to be able to know this too shall pass, hallelujah. We used to sing trouble don't last always, you know, Things happen with trouble, those kind of things. Doesn't last always, it goes. So there is a time for rejoicing. There's a time for crying, weeping, all of that. But the interesting thing about God, God very often will ask us to rejoice before the battle is over. He would ask for us to give the victory cry, not, not, not out of hypocrisy, not out of pretense, but out of faith. And so I want to join with you in making a faith declaration. Yes, Lord, that the battle is already won. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And that God has strengthened your hands for war. And victory is already in your hands in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Thank the Lord. I want to pray with, with Sylvia today, Father. We just want to thank you for this woman of God. Now, Sylvia, it's, it's interesting. I know this is going to sound funny, but I see you with boxing gloves on. <laughs> I hope, I hope you're not beating up somebody today for that. <laughs> Let's see what boxing gloves are. But it's what what I'm getting a sense of getting the um the attitude of a warrior. All right. I I was in, I was thinking I was in the fifth grade or so. I thought I was a little bad dude, you know, in the fifth grade and everything. And I, I think I slapped a girl. Yeah, I know. I used to do some stupid stuff, really stupid. But this girl grew up in the hood with me. You know, I was in the I was in the project. She was she was deep in the projects too. And I hit her and said something, and uh, she was like, "We're gonna fight." And I'm I'm like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna I'm a, you know, man, this is gonna be a fight to the finish." And man, we stepped outside, and the girl rocked back and got in position. I'm like, "Whoa, <laughs> whoa." And guess what? I'm like, we, we don't need to fight. I mean, that, that girl was a fighter. You know what I'm saying? I, I could do okay, but this girl was a fighter, had the scars, the, you know. Man, I didn't fight her. Sylvia, it's time for the devil to know that you are a fighter. Put your gloves on. Or fight him without the gloves. The weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down the stronghold. Yes. Get before God, worship and pray, believe him, trust him. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think. It's time to put your gloves on. Shop the devil by fighting back, not by, not by giving up, not by, not by accepting the stuff that he dumps, not by, no, no, fight, put the stuff on, get in the ring. No, no, you shouldn't have, you messed with me when I was tired, when I was discouraged, you kept messing. Now is time, boom, let's go, let's go. Knock him out, take him out, take him out. Now do prayer, do praise, do worship, get in, get God, release the voice of God that is in you. Speak it out, write, write out a prayer, putting the devil under your feet. Hallelujah. Say it in front of the mirror. Record yourself <laughs> talking about the devil's demise. Find the scriptures that talk about the destruction of the enemy. Do him in. In Jesus' name, amen? In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Listen, I'm going to stop here. I hope you guys got it. There's going to be a lot of social pressure. A lot of pushing people in the wrong direction. And because most people are ignorant of history, most people didn't, don't even know about the trial in Nuremberg, right? The physicians that got in trouble for pushing medical stuff when it should not have been happening. And here's the, the main question they're asking right here. There are people today who are misusing medicine and hurting a whole lot of folk. Look for them to do even more of that for profit's sake. Oh, may God help us to rise up. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity to share with your people. Father, I thank you for your mercy that you allowed me to share with your people today. Use this message however you want to use it, oh God, and let none of me come through where I'm in the way and I'm the issue Move me out of the way, Jesus. You be glorified. Yes, Lord. I thank you that miracles are being released right now in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Miracles are being, yes, Lord. Miracles are being released. Depression is being removed now in Jesus' name. Anxiety is being removed now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, enjoy the rest of your day. Walk with God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I pray for my family, Lord, that you be with each of them, my sons, Marquise and Tashan and Norton, in Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. I pray for my wife, Lord, that you would keep her and strengthen her. I pray for those who were not able to connect today. Hallelujah. Whatever's going on in life, God, I, I thank you for blessing them. And for those who listen to this on the night shift, I pray for the saint that discouraged to know you can look up. God has not abandoned you. God is not going away. God is right there with you and he's going to help you. He's going to help you. He, he is going to help you. Hallelujah. His eye is on the sparrow and I know he's watching over you. God bless you. Thank you so much for your time. Really just such a blessing to spend with you. I look forward to talking to you again later. Okay. Okay. Take care. Love you to life. Love you to life. Be good, everybody. When you watch this on YouTube or Facebook, make sure you like it, make sure you share it. And we bless God for each of you in Jesus name. Yes. If you like to give uh, solfellowship.com, that's our website. You can go to PayPal for Spirit of Life Christian Ministries at PayPal, as well as you can mail at 15507 South Normandy Avenue, Box 237, Gardena, California, 90247. God bless you. Love you to life. Wow, that's interesting. Every time I wave my hand, that's, I know, but that's the camera. That's not the power. Okay, love you to life. Take care. Bye.